Today's video is going to show you some of the different blur options in Photoshop. So essentially, if you've got a photo open in Photoshop or an image, if you go to filter, you've got here blur with a bunch of blur options here, your basic ones, and the blur gallery with your more uh, sort of advanced blurs you can work with. I'm going to show you how they work and what sort of effects you can get. But also, before we get into those, there is also a blur tool on the right here, which looks like a drip. If you can't find it, look for one of these other tools, a blur, sharpen, or smudge. Click and hold, and you can select the blur tool. And it's pretty straightforward. Whatever I paint gets blurred. And I can take the strength right up and blur it quite dramatically, or I can even take that strength right down up here and do a more subtle sort of blur, which requires a lot more hits to sort of work. But uh, essentially, I'm going to turn those blurs off, and we're going to look at some of the filters for blur. Now, if I select this portion here, and go filter, blur, and just simply blur, I get this blur effect. But I'm going to invert my selection and go to filter, blur, and blur more. Now if you compare the two, one is sort of blurred lightly, the other one, which you can see a little bit along here, is blurred a bit more heavily. And they're just straight up commands you can throw at Photoshop to get that blur effect. So I'm going to delete that layer, and we're going to create a new one. But if you're looking for another straight blur tool, you can go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur, and you actually have a dial you can use. So you can actually take the blur from subtle to full and get whatever level of blur you want. And of course, if you want to, like I said before, you can use your selection tool to simply select an area, go to the same, whatever you select will be all that gets blurred. So you can get effects like this if that's what you're after. Now going into some of these other features, if I go to filter and blur and go to average, it literally averages the colors in the photo. So if I decide to highlight the jumper, I can go to filter, blur, and average to create an average color of that jumper. And I can also go to the sky here, do the same thing, filter, blur, average. I can get an average color of what I've selected, which is pretty handy. So I'm going to, once again, delete that layer, start again. So filter, Blur, box blur. This is uh, the next one down from, uh, apart from Gaussian blur. If we hit the box blur tool, we get this blur which has kind of like a box effect within it. It's not a straight up blur. It kind of has a vertical and horizontal kind of like sort of style through it. And we get like this boxed blur effect. Another simple slider blur tool that we can use. But if we go down the list, we've got that, we've got the lens blur. Now this is a tool that allows you to create a photo lens type blur. As you can see, the light is shining through a bit stronger here. If I go down these settings, I can sort of change the curvature of the blade, rotation, things like that. I can play with these settings to get different levels of blur. And I can actually up the specular highlights so we get a harder light. So we get more of a natural camera looking blur. And um, you can also change things such as how the blur is uh, calculated. You can add noise, I should say. This is actually the noise section. So if you want it to look like a noisy kind of photo, you can add in some noise there as well. And uh, if you want to set a focal point, you can also play with that. Not gonna worry about that today. Uh, a bit more involved, but you sort of get the idea. So we can get a pretty cool looking camera blur if we use that. Now, if I keep going down from photo, so, so filter, blur, motion blur, this is a pretty cool effect. If I crank it right up, you can see we've got this horizontal motion blur. I can change this angle here and get a blur going any direction. So I can create kind of like a motion blur effect, like we're moving the camera or something's moving in front of the camera. This can be very handy if I say select subject, copy and paste and do the filter, blur, motion blur. I can make him look like he's moving out of the frame a little bit. It's a little bit more involved as I want to cut out the guy underneath, but you sort of get the idea of what I'm trying to sort of demonstrate. Now, if you keep going down the list, we've got motion blur. Radial blur is a similar thing where we can actually sort of blur in circles. Now, there's no preview at the moment, but if I crank this right up, I've got it on spin at the moment. You can see it kind of spins and we can change the levels on that based on that slider. And again, if I go to filter, blur and radial blur, I can also switch to zoom get this cool zoomed in effect as well by, by sort of using that radial blur. So essentially it takes the center of the image as the center of a circle and blurs by either spinning or zooming depending on what option you have chosen. So once again, I get in a blur and I've got shape blur. Now this one kind of is kind of like the box blur except it blurs in shapes. 
Uh, you can choose different shapes down here if you want to, such as flowers, to get different effects. It's uh, it's a bit of a funny one. I don't really have much understand how useful it is, but someone out there will probably have a little bit more expertise on it than me. But you get the idea. It sort of blurs in a bit of a shape type fashion. But if I go down to Smart Blur, this is a really interesting uh, effect. If you put these two side by side, you can see it's kept the lines and the detail, but taken some of the noisy areas and kind of blurred them. I can crank that right, that radius, sorry, the radius down, I should say, it's the threshold, play with those settings and get some nifty effects. So if I actually take this and zoom in, you can see we've got like this cool effect where it's kind of like almost like a, a simplified print effect with the, what's it called, smart blur. So that's pretty interesting, have a play with that. You can change the quality, the mode from normal. You can go edge only and create like this edge only effect. So it'll actually highlight the edges of the picture and give you this effect. Uh, not really a blur, but it uses the same technology. I've got overlay edge as well. So we get both the edge and the blur, which is pretty nifty. And of course, I can delete that layer and create a new one. We go down to blur again and surface blur has this effect where it kind of blurs over the top of your image. So it kind of like overlays the blur on top of the image. So you still get some detail behind the blur, which is uh, just a little bit different. Once again, play with those sliders to get various levels. And you get some pretty intriguing effects with that. It can be good for photography, uh, but you can also simply copy that layer into a normal blur and you'll have more control over the blending mode that way. But getting into the interesting stuff, the blur gallery. Now, with if I go to field blur here, you can see here everything's blurred, but I've got this little dot. I can move this over here and really crank up the blur. I hit my point over here, crank it up again. But this time, if I go straight to where the head was and dial that right back, I can also use this slider on the right. I can just zoom out. I can't really zoom out. I can actually add in various levels of blur on the image. So maybe I'll decide that's too much. I can come back and dial it back a little bit. And you can see I've got this cool effect where certain areas are blurred. Maybe I want to blur the bottom. I click OK. And I've got this effect where the area I didn't want blurred isn't blurred because I've added points on the page or on the image for it to blur using field blur. So that's a very, very a uh, useful uh, tool for sort of creating very unique blurs on your image. Iris blur, a little bit different. We get like an iris that we can adjust or rotate and we can sort of adjust the levels of blur and we can sort of turn it up. So that way we can kind of figure out exactly where, it's kind of like a radial style field blur. So we can get this cool effect where we can really bring it down or crank it up and get something quite different. So that's a simpler sort of tool to use in field blur, but still a very interesting um, effect. So cancel, filter, blur gallery, tilt shift. Now I've got another image prepared for this, but essentially with tilt shift, I can create an area again, similar to the iris blur, but in a straight line. And the blur, if I really crank that up, you can see how it kind of blurs outside of this line and then kind of fades that into a sharper point in the middle here. And you can also play with some of the distortion a bit to get different results that way. But what this is really good for, if you ever heard of tilt shift photography, I'll switch to another image after I cancel. You see this image here. The idea is it has this weird effect where it makes things look very small. If I go to filter, blur gallery, Oh, not feel blur. You want to, you might notice if I untick it over here on the blur tool, I can actually just tick what I want, which is tilt shift, and create this tilt shift effect by moving these lines around. Turn that up a bit. Hit OK, and it creates this nifty effect where pink people kind of look small. It's uh, it's a weird. I don't know exactly how it tricks the eye, but it's a cool tool to play with for shots where people are high up and to create a bit of an optical illusion around the size of things in a photo. But continuing on, if we go to Filter, Blur Gallery, Path Blur, you can see we've got this basic blur and speed. I can actually take a path, modify it, add points, and I can sort of get this 
very trippy effect by moving this path around and creating what's called a path blur. And of course I can taper and play with how it sort of reacts around the path. But um, you get some, you get, get the idea. It's a very interesting sort of blur to play with and you get some pretty cool effects playing with that. But I'm gonna untick that, I'll just go cancel. And finally we go to filter, blur gallery, spin blur. Now again, it's kind of like the radial blur except with the spin, but we have more control over the circle. We can move the circle around. We can crank this right up to create something different. And of course, like I said, I can move this to any point if I want to. It's a This is also another very interesting tool, especially good for if you're doing uh, artwork, digital art, and you want to just target certain areas of what you're doing, you can use these tools and get some pretty cool effects. So that is pretty much it for those blur tools. They're all pretty uh, they're all pretty fun to play with. Have a bit of a play with them, see what you reckon. Otherwise, uh, I've got another video coming up soon. We'll show you how to blur a background and add a few cool sort of blurs to it. So check that out and you can apply a lot of these to that. I'll pop that video on the screen right now. Otherwise, thanks for watching and hope you have a great day.